Today, I am going to teach you how to wire up a turn signal circuit with LEDs on anything you want, including motorcycles, dirt bikes, hot rods, maybe go-karts, mopeds, uh, side-by-sides. I can't think of anything else. Either way, we're going to wire it up with this circuit, and I'm going to teach you how. All right, so naturally, you're going to need a few components here. You're going to need LED bulbs. Now these are LED 1157 style bulbs, which are also the same as 2057s. Normal, normally they look like this if they're incandescent, but LED versions, well, they come in a, co a couple different uh, styles, but these ones look like this. But either way, they go in an 1157 socket or a 2057, they're pretty much interchangeable. And you're gonna need four of those, because you obviously want a couple for the left side, a couple for the right side, You'll need sockets for 1157 or 2057 bulbs. You're gonna need two, either four or five pin relays. Either one works. You'll need an LED flasher. Now you have to make sure it is for an LED. You don't want to get one of these because these are for incandescent bulbs and these won't work with LEDs. You'll need a three-way switch. And then you're gonna need some miscellaneous wiring, including a couple of fuses. You always wanna have fuses so you protect your circuit and you avoid fires. All right, now, once you've got all the components, here's what you wanna do. You wanna start with a couple of fused wires. You want two of them. They come in, one of them is gonna to go to the flasher. One of them is gonna to go to the center post on the three-way switch. Now, a three-way switch has three positions. In the center, it's not doing anything. If you flick it one direction, it sends power out one of the wires. If you flick it the other direction, it sends the power from the center out the other wire. And that's how the three-way switch works. So the power will come into the three-way switch in the center. And then the two white wires here, those go to pin 86 on these relays. Now, both the relays are the same, and both white wires are pin 86. Now, if you look at the top of a relay, you're going to see that a lot of them actually have the numbers on them. And... If you look on the bottom, you'll see that five pin relays are all labeled. So you knew, you know which pin is 30, 87, 86, 85. Um, you know what they all are because they're all labeled. All right, so back to the diagram. The other wire comes into the relay and then it splits into these two blue wires. The blue wires are pin 30 on the relays. Next up are the yellow wires. Now the yellow wires are where the power comes out of the relays, and they are pin 87 on both, and they go to the actual light bulbs themselves. So that is the power coming out of the relay, and that's what actually powers up the light bulbs on each side. And lastly, we have pin 85, which is the two black wires, and those go to ground. Now you'll notice that every bulb has a ground wire coming off of it and they need those ground wires to work. Now, normally, if you have this bolted in a car or a dirt bike or a four-wheeler or whatever it is, you would ground all of these ground wires right to the chassis. Now, I don't have a chassis to ground to, so I have connected all of the grounds together so that I have, you know, one ground circuit. But in your case, you'll probably just ground all of the ground wires to the chassis of the vehicle because that's how grounds work. Now, there's a couple other things that I should probably mention. One of them is that this is an LED flasher, and LED flashers, they need to be hooked up the correct way. There's actually a, a positive and a negative, or a positive and a, um, and a load, and if you mix them up, the circuit won't work anymore. So I've just swapped the wires, and now watch what happens. Notice it doesn't actually pulse the lights anymore. So you have to make sure that you actually hook up the load which will be these blue wires, to the L terminal, and then the power coming in to the positive terminal. And when you do that, then it will actually flash properly. Because inside this is a little tiny circuit board. And the circuit board, think of it as a computer, and it basically says, oh, there's power coming in? I'm going to start pulsing that power. Now, if you have the old style bulbs, you can use this style relay. Or you can use the LED flasher relay, and it should work with these style bulbs. We'll actually try it just to show you what happens. So this is a regular 1157 bulb. 
and if we swap it out, you're gonna find that it works just like the LEDs, it's just less bright. So here's the LEDs, and we'll compare it to the incandescent bulbs. And you can see these are much less bright, but here's the other fun thing. We can actually disconnect the LED flasher and use an old style flasher. Now these things work off of resistance. So basically there's a little metal tab inside and when it gets warm, it expands and pops open and it breaks a connection. And then as soon as it cools down, it connects again. And that's what causes the flashing to happen. It basically makes and breaks a connection inside. But you need to have electricity um, with resistance in the circuit to make this happen so it heats up the tab inside. If you don't have that resistance, it doesn't work. So let's plug it in here and we'll see what happens. So once again, this is an old style flasher that won't work with LEDs, but it will work with incandescent bulbs, as you can see. So LEDs, not enough resistance. Incandescent bulbs, definitely enough resistance. Now another question that you might have is why do we need these two relays here? Can't we just run the whole thing without the relays? And the answer is um, maybe, but it kind of depends. As you can see, this flasher is rated up to 10 amps at 12 volts. Now, let's have a hypothetical situation for you. Let's imagine that these bulbs draw 5 amps each. Now, in the real world, they don't anywhere, they don't actually do anything close to that. But let's just imagine for a second. And let's imagine the switch can handle 5 amps. If we didn't have this relay here and we were running a power wire from the flasher, directly to the switch and then out to the bulbs without using a relay, we would end up burning up the switch because if the bulbs are drawing five amps a piece, that's 10 amps, and that means we're drawing 10 amps through the switch. And when you do 10 amps through a five amp switch, you burn out the switches. So what will end up happening is you'll constantly be burning out or breaking switches, and sometimes you could even cause a fire, and that's not ideal. So what the relay setup is doing is it's allowing you to put 10 amps through the relays and 5 amps through the switch. So basically, the power comes into the switch and it's super low amperage. And it is just telling the relay to turn on and off. That's all the switch is doing. There's not like a huge amount of electricity going through this switch. It's just simply telling the relay, turn on, turn off. And then the actual electricity, the like 5 or 10 amps or whatever it is, is actually coming through this wire, through the flasher, through the relays, and out to each set of bulbs. Now, in this scenario where we have LEDs, you're talking really low amperage ratings, so the whole thing is pretty safe. But if you were to swap over to some bigger bulbs, or if you had like a dozen of these things, you know, they add up. And if you get too many in a row, you're gonna get too much amperage and you're gonna start melting stuff if you don't use relays. All right, the last question that always comes up is what size fuses should I use? And honestly, that really depends as well. It depends if you're using LED bulbs or if you're using incandescent bulbs or how many bulbs you're using. I actually made another video that I will link down in the description that gives a really good explanation of how to determine the fuse size and the wire size of your whole circuit. Because if your wire sizes are too small, you end up melting them and lighting fires. And if your fuses are too big for your wires, you end up with fires. And if your fuses are too small, then they pop all the time. So it takes a little bit of math, but I have a whole video that is really simple to understand, and it's right down in the description. Check it out. So I had a lot of fun making that video. Hopefully it helped you out in some way. And if not, hopefully it was at least entertaining. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, maybe share it with a friend. And um, yeah, check out my other videos if you, uh, if you get a chance. You might like those too. I have lots of wiring videos. So I'll be making a lot more wiring videos in the future because I know people will enjoy them. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.